we are going to be looking at uh, gas solid reactions effect of equilibria. Now, uh, just to give you a background on this whole effect of equilibria, let us just look at what uh, we have learnt in our school on the blast furnace. Blast furnace technology is uh, it's rather new perhaps last 50, 60 years, but steel making has been known for a very long time. For example, I mean uh, if you look at the history of India for example, uh, there are a lot of reports that uh, is available around the world when it says that uh, India was the largest exporter of steel. Now, why is it that you know these people have been able to make so much of steel is because the raw materials are available and so on. Now, to be able to get good quality steel, you just look at some of the reactions that are taking place here. You have iron oxide as in the form of iron ore which is coming in, you have charcoal which is a reducing agent and some fluxes to take care of some other reactions. And then as this material keeps moving down and more and more reactions take place and then the reaction for example, iron oxide reacts with carbon monoxide to give you ferric oxide and then carbon dioxide as goes down and found you find finally, this uh, iron oxide uh, reacts with CO and finally, you give you iron and then carbon dioxide and finally, molten metal comes out. But the traditional process of steel making in India was very, very different. For example, what is uh, seen around the world today is that you get a hot metal and because the hot metal and which is protected by slag certain amount of dissolution of these materials also take place in the hot metal and which creates certain problems from the point of view of using this uh, iron. But the traditional process that was happening in India was that this iron Fe was actually harvested as a solid and not as a liquid. This is what was unique about the Indian process. I mean very old perhaps going on for last 1000 years and even more interesting perhaps some of you may not know is that um, beginning uh, maybe 4th or 5th century AD to as late as 1500s all the wars particularly in Europe and West Asia were fought with what is called as the Damascus sword. Damascus sword and the steel that was used for the Damascus sword was actually made in a some places around Andhra Pradesh and from where it was exported for a very, very long time. Or in other words, this technology of steel making that is traditional to India is interesting is that they were making solid iron rather than liquid iron. So, or in other words, what we are trying to say is that if you know how to handle the equilibria, then we can drive the reaction in the appropriate direction. It is something that we all know and, uh, and something that our uh, you know uh, people who have uh, I mean uh, created this process have understood this and we want to quantitate this by looking at some examples, some more examples. Let me just quick put down the next example which uh, is also very familiar to you which is calcium carbonate decomposition CO2 sorry CaCO3 giving you CO2 plus CaO. I call this as A, call this as B, call this as C. Okay. Let me write down the Kp for this reaction at different temperatures. Kp is in mm, Hg, T is in Kelvin. 0.073 1.84, 1173, 1173, 1173, 1173. Okay. Let me write down the rate of formation as K2 times CC minus K2 dash CB times CC minus K1 dash CA. So, this RA refers to the formation of calcium carbonate. So, that K 2 dash C C C B minus a K 1 dash C A. Okay. Now, since 
mit this is a solid this is a solid and we take solid as unit activity of course in actual practice c is solid and b is gas sorry okay now if you take solid as unit activity we can simplify this let me just quickly write that down so with solid as unit activity our r a becomes k 2 c c minus of k 1 or I will put this as k 2 times c c minus of k 1 divided by k 2. Okay. Let me simplify it further which is k 2 times c c minus of k c and I will write it as k 2 by r t p c minus of k p. Okay. So, the rate at which the decomposition reaction C A C O 3 equal to C O 2 plus C A O takes place really depends if therefore, the decomposition reaction takes place when the formation takes place when P C is greater than K P therefore, the decomposition takes place when K P is greater than P C is it clear. So, the most important thing is that when P C what do we conclude from here R A refers to rate of formation of calcium carbonate. So, when would calcium carbonate formation take place? When P C is greater than K P. When would the reverse reaction takes place? So, we say minus of R A equal to K 2 by R T K P minus of P C. Okay. Is it all right? So, the decomposition reaction takes place when the choice of K P is such that this term is positive. Is this point clear to all of you? So, let us look at this once again. So, if you look at the decomposition uh, K p values for decomposition, we find that around 1073 k uh, K p values are about 167 correct. Now, the partial pressures of carbon dioxide in combustion gases something like 9 percent, 10 percent. So, it is about 65 to 70 mm is what we expect in the combustion gases. Therefore, if reaction has to take place at all then the temperature at which we must perform this must be greater than the k the uh, about 65 mm which means we must choose temperatures around 1073 at least to give us the driving force for the decomposition so this is why you will find in all the uh, lime kilns around the world the temperatures are well above 1073 well above okay now if you look at this planet earth all of you know that carbon dioxide in this planet is primarily present in rock. That means, all the carbon dioxide is present in the form of calcium carbonate rocks. If you go to the Martian atmosphere, carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere. That is how its whole thing is organized. That means, depending upon this K p values, you will find the carbon dioxide exists in appropriate forms in different planets of the world of the universe. Effect of changing gas composition. Now, the context to this let me put it down once again the context to this is as follows. Let us say you are conducting a reaction like Z, uh, zinc sulfide zinc blend is a very uh, important ore in this country it is available in uh, Udaipur area. Hindustan zinc it used to be uh, now it is worn by Vedanta group. So, they oxidize zinc, sulfi zinc sulfide with oxygen make zinc oxide. So, you get sulfur dioxide. So, what is it that they do? They have a fluidized bed in which they contact this uh, the zinc sulfide is fed like this and the air is coming like this it gets oxidized and so on. So, what is important here is that the effect of the composition which means the effect of what is the oxygen concentration that is in contact with zinc sulfide is important for the rate of chemical reaction. We must be able to understand this so that we want to put those numbers in the appropriate perspective. So, let us say the reaction is A gas plus B B solid giving you C gas plus D solid. Okay. Let us assume that it is in contact with for the moment you have gas and you have solid. That means, gas and solid for the for the moment it is in co-current flow. 
of course, we can look at various other features later on co-current flow. All right. So, our stoichiometry let me put down the stoichiometry F A, F B, F C and F D our usual nomenclature nothing new here 1 minus of X A F B 0 F A 0 times X A F C 0 plus F A 0 X A F D 0 plus F A 0 X A. Okay. So, these are stoichiometry and we notice that if you want C A it is simply F A by V. Okay. So, this is F A 0 in our nomenclature divided by V. We take V as V naught taking the gas law into account V naught V naught uh, it becomes T by T naught correct. All right. This is the effect of the temperature on gas flow and so on. Okay. Similarly, for we can do for others let us do for others C A and C C C C equal to sorry C C equal to F C 0 plus F A 0 X A times T naught <coughs> divided by V naught times T. So, C C becomes C C 0 plus C A 0 X A times T naught by T. Okay. Now, we just want to see how the equilibria affects the process. So, we recognize that K P for this reaction for this reaction let us look at it once again for this reaction K P is P C by P A that is what I have written here P C by P A. Okay. So, K P is this now this is written as in this form C C 0 plus C A 0 X A divided by P A which is C A 0 times 1 minus of X A. So, at the equilibria I am putting a star to denote its equilibria accordingly we get K P now depends on C C 0 plus C A 0 times X A divided by C A 0 times 1 minus of x a it is at equilibria. So, this gives us x a star this fairly simple uh, arithmetic. So, it divided by 1 plus k p okay, where theta c is simply f c 0 divided by f a 0. Now, what we are trying to say here is that the value of x a star at the solid surface depends on the choice of theta c. In other words, if the product what is our product please recognize here our product is product is c if product is present in the feed it has a bad effect on the process because it affects the extent to which we can drive the reaction at equilibrium. So, this is one important message that we all know from basic thermodynamics that is stating the whole thing once again. Okay. Now, let us look at the chemical reaction A gas plus B B solid equal to C gas plus D solid this is the reaction we are considering. So, the rate at which reaction occurs we want to do it in this co current flow in, in, in a rotary kiln for example it is R A dash times A S. Okay. What is R A dash? R A dash is the rate of chemical reaction per unit surface area and A S is the surface area per unit volume. So, that is how and if R A dash is due to a film diffusion control of which we have talked about earlier. So, it is taking a form of this nature therefore, you will get R A dash equal to minus of k g I, I forgot a minus sign here k g times C A 0 times 1 minus of x A minus of C A naught times 1 minus of x A star. So, this is the rate at which reaction occurs and I have to multiply it by okay, this is R A. Okay. 
Therefore, DFA which is the rate at which chemical reaction takes place in our equipment is now K g C a naught within brackets of x a star minus of x a multiplied by the surface area per unit volume. Okay. Now, this x a star we have already said uh, let me put this in this form d x a by d v with a minus sign equal to with the minus sign k g c a 0 times x a star minus of x a times a s. Okay. Now, what do we say is that this x a star we have already shown little earlier if you recall here the x a star we have already shown is given by k p minus of theta c by 1 plus k p. Therefore, we are now in a position to tell what will be the rate at which our chemical reaction will occur in the rotary kill in the co-current flow of gas and solid. Okay. Now, also recognize that this x a star depends upon the choice of temperature, it depends on the choice of the conditions under which we will run the process. If there is product in the feed to that extent you lose reaction rate. Okay. So, in uh, the context is that combustion gases contains carbon dioxide and therefore, you have to deal with the fact that carbon dioxide will have a negative influence on the rate of reaction. And therefore, you have to choose the temperature at which you will run the process having high K p values. So, that the driving forces are satisfactory that is why people run rotary kilns at up something like 1100, uh, 1150, 1200. Okay. Now, let us take this forward a little. we have d x a by please notice that the left hand side can now be written as d x a by d where it is a gas residence time k g c a 0 cancels off. So, you get x a star minus of x a times a s. Okay. So, what is tau g? Tau g is simply gas residence time where tau g is given as sorry tau g is simply v divided by v naught. Okay. Now, let me restate this equal to k g times x a star minus of x a times a s. What is a s? A s is surface area per unit volume for film diffusion control we are looking at film diffusion control here where the surface area which is relevant to the process is the external surface area. Okay. So, we said uh, a s is given as 4 pi r squared which is the surface area of the particle there are n particles per unit volume of the reaction equipment. So, this is the surface area of our interest. Experimentally we can determine this quantity what is called as 4 by 3 pi r cubed this is the uh, volume number of particles divided by generally for rotary kilns in fact for any reacting equipment this epsilon r is an experimentally determinable number what means how much solids are held per unit volume of the equipment suppose you stop the rotary kiln and then go and collect all the solids you will find there are so many uh, you know cubic meters of solid per unit volume you can calculate the epsilon r is a well documented number therefore depending upon the rotation speed this number can be obtained so, accordingly a s can now be written in terms of the uh, epsilon r. So, it comes out to be how much in terms of epsilon r is how much is it 3 epsilon r by r okay. is it all right. So, let us substitute for uh, for this one here. So, you get k g x a star minus of x a a s is thrice epsilon r by r is it. Okay. If you have a rotary kiln in which there is gas and solids are in co-current flow, it is for co-current flow, then it is directly it, this equation will tell us what will be the extent to which we can drive the process. Okay. So, once you know gas residence time to find out solids residence time, how do you find solids residence time? Solids residence tau s is simply volume of the equipment divided by volume of solids. All the volume, all the solids you have to find the volume. So, this is known the solid volume is known because you are putting in solids at a certain rate. So, you know the solids volume, you know the reaction volume of the equipment. What is V equal to? V equal to V naught times tau g. So, you can calculate the solids residence times as well. Okay. So, 
given uh, given gas residence time data you can calculate gas uh, solids residence time therefore you can specify the whole process on the basis of this equation let's say this is equation 1 okay if instead of gas film control suppose let us say you have a reaction control process what do we have you have a gas plus b b solid giving you c gas plus d solid is it all right d solid correct now if it is under reaction control once again our basic equation that describes our process is r a dash times a s okay what is r a dash for uh, reaction control r a dash for reaction control looks something like this is k s times c a minus c a star okay once again the form is identical to what we have written for uh, film diffusion control and what is a s for reaction control we have said this before it is 4 by 3 pi r cube n divided by v is this correct this is epsilon r this is epsilon r correct so a s is 4 pi r c square n divided by v okay is this okay this is a s and this is epsilon r this is an experimentally measured experimental quantity all right this is an experimental quantity so this comes from experiment a s for reaction control is 4 pi r square n by v okay so we can simplify this and now write a s as thrice epsilon r divided by r within brackets of r c squared by r squared is it all right so this i'll simplify this as thrice epsilon r divided by r 1 minus x b to the power of 2 by 3 is it okay now all right so let me write a s equal to thrice epsilon r divided by r multiplied by 1 minus of x b to the power of 2 by 3 how is x b related to x a from our stoichiometry we have already done this so it is simply divided by theta b so this comes from stoichiometry so that our now our equation now looks like this dfa by dv equal to ks times ca star ca minus of ca star times as which is thrice epsilon r divided by r 1 minus of x a by theta b to the power of 2 by 3 okay with a minus sign so or it is d x a by d v f a 0 with a minus sign here equal to minus k s c a minus of c a star thrice epsilon r by r 1 minus of x a by theta b to by 2 by 3. So, what is it that we have done identical to what we have done for reaction in uh, uh, film diffusion control a similar equation is there for reaction control okay now we can simplify this and write it in this form of dx a by d tau g please recognize that it is uh, tau g is gas residence time and c a can be written like this k s times x a star minus of x a multiplied by this effect which is by r 1 minus of x a by theta b to the power of 2 by 3 okay is this is all right is it okay so what are we saying now if we have reaction control instead of film control the form of the equation that describes your process is given by the right hand side k s is the reaction velocity x a star is your equilibria which is already determined and there are all the other things refers to the process of uh, epsilon r comes from experiments capital r is the size of the equipment so this can be integrated uh, if you know the initial condition how do you integrate this x a equal to 0 tau g equal to 0 therefore a forward march this can be integrated and you can get how x a changes with tau g now the third example is the case of what's called as ash diffusion <coughs> ash diffusion control what is ash diffusion control we talked about it 
which said that it is the resistance to the supply of gas through the product layer. So, let us write our differential equation once again you have d f a d v equal to some r a dash times s v. What is this r a dash times s? It is the rate per unit per particle. So, I am just multiplying this by thrice epsilon r divided by 4 pi r cubed. Please understand what I am saying. Eps what is epsilon r? What is epsilon r? Epsilon r is hold up of solids per unit volume. Okay. So, that means every unit volume has epsilon or cubic meters of solids. And what is the, so, what is the volume of each particle 4 by 3 pi r cubed. Therefore, this 3 epsilon r by 4 pi r cubed refers to the number of particles while r a dash s refers to reaction per particle. So, this is the rate at which reaction occurs per unit volume per unit time. Okay. Now, what is this r a dash s? We have already done this. We said this is minus of 4 pi d C a minus of C a star. We have done this before okay. divided by 1 by r c minus 1 by r. We have done this also and then thrice epsilon r divided by 4 pi r cube. Okay. Is this all right? So, this, this r a dash s this form we have already derived. Okay. You only multiplied by the appropriate number to take care of the number of particles by unit volume. Okay. Now, we can integrate this. So, help me now. So, left hand side becomes f a 0 d x a by d tau g with a minus sign equal to right hand side is minus of 4 pi d. This becomes c a 0 x a star minus of x a divided by 1 by r c minus 1 by r I will put this here thrice epsilon r 4 pi r cube. Thank you. Okay. Is it okay now? Is it all right? So, let me write this in this form d x a by d tau g okay. and the right hand side signs go off c a 0 cancels off I get 4 pi d x a star minus of x a okay, thrice epsilon r divided by 4 pi r squared r by r c minus of 1. So, this d x a by d tau g equal to thrice epsilon r d divided by r squared within bracket I am just putting this to that x a star in this form minus of x a divided by within brackets 1 minus of x a by theta b okay, minus 1 by 3 minus of 1. Do we all agree with this? From here r by r c is written in this form. Okay. Yes or no? This term, this term is r by r c squared, is it? R by uh, r by r c only. R by r c is what? What is r by r c? One minus of x b to the power of one by three. Okay, and x b is x a divided by theta b. Comes from stoichiometry. Is it all right? Yes or no? So, for the case of ash diffusion control, our final form looks like this. This is ash diffusion control. Okay. Now, we can integrate this. How do you integrate this? At tau g equal to 0, x a equal to 0. Okay. So, for a therefore, if you have a Ranjkuta routine, if you want to integrate forward, you only requ require the right hand side at tau g equal to 0, right hand side is fully known. Therefore, you can forward march and then complete the integration. So, all the three cases, case of reaction control, case of film diffusion control, case of ash diffusion control, we have forms by which we can integrate forward and determine the size of the equipment for a given process that you have chosen. Is that clear? Okay. Now, we can take this a little forward and by and look at combination of resistances. It is fairly elementary, we have done this in earlier, but let me run through this once again. 
for the case of ash diffusion control for combination let me just put down all the things once again because that makes it a little easier equal to minus of k g c a 0 x a star minus of x a and just writing it again thrice epsilon r by r this is for film diffusion. Okay. We have done this before. Now, I am writing it again for the case of reaction control C A 0 x A star minus of x A thrice k S epsilon r by r 1 minus of x A by theta b to the power of 2 by 3. This is reaction control. Is this all right? Huh? Reaction control. Now, for the case of what is this? This is ash diffusion control. Our numbers look like this thrice epsilon r d C A 0 x A star minus of x A divided by I am just writing it once again exactly what we have done before 1 minus x B it to the power of minus 1 by 3 minus 1. This is something that we have done just now. Okay. So, this is for the this is ash, ash control. Therefore, if you have a rotary kill in which all the 3 are important, how do we combine them? We combine them by recognizing the following. We write resistance equal to potential potential by flux. So, for the case of film diffusion our resistance this becomes 1 by thrice k g epsilon r by r. Please uh, look at the form, look at the form here that means uh, thrice k g epsilon r by r. Is this clear? I am just writing the resistance by looking at this form itself. Okay the resistance is potential divided by flux. Therefore, it becomes 1 by with a minus sign k g thrice epsilon r by r. Similarly, for the next case which is uh, film and reaction uh, let me write this is for film okay, and for epsilon omega 2 I am writing it as 1 divided by thrice k s epsilon r by r. Okay within brackets 1 minus x a by theta b to the power of 2 by 3. This is reaction. Let us just check this once again. C is divided by this it becomes 1 divided by thrice k s epsilon r by r exactly is what I have written. Okay. Is it all right? It comes, it comes from the previous form please uh, I, I cannot show both at the same time. But if you look at this here, C A 0 x A star divided by this becomes just inverse of this. Okay. And for the third case, which is epsilon third, that becomes minus 1 minus of x B to the power of minus 1 by 3 minus 1 divided by thrice epsilon r divided by r square. So, this is the form in which the resistance for ash ash control okay so if you want to combine all the three if you want to combine all the three our procedure is what is our procedure that flux equal to total potential divided by the uh, by the total resistance so let me write it in that form which means for the case of combined resistances combined resistances okay resistances flux which is dfa by dv should be equal to potential divided by summation of sigma yes or no so once we put all the resistances together our uh, numbers look something like this. I will not write this. In fact, I will write the final form because it is fairly elementary. So, the final result looks like this. It is not necessary to do the whole thing again and again because we have already done that. Becomes x a star minus of x a 
within brackets of thrice k g epsilon r by r the first one. Then you have thrice k s epsilon r by r within brackets of 1 minus of x a by theta b to the power of 2 by 3. So, this is reaction. Third one is ash diffusion which is epsilon r and diffusion coefficient divided by r squared 1 minus x a by theta b is a little messy, but you know it is something that we have to get used to minus 1 by 3 minus 1. Okay. Is it all right? So, it is exactly similar to what we have done for single particle. So, if you have a rotary kill gas co current flow of gas and solids, the gas conversion with respect to gas residence time is this is the potential divided by resistance. Okay. The right hand side once again x a equal to 0 at tau g equal to 0, which means for a forward march Ranjakuta routine, the right hand side is fully specified. Therefore, you can integrate forward and complete the process by uh, whatever is specified, the rest of it can be done through the appropriate integration. Notice here that k g is an experimentally known quantity. K s is a known quantity, diffusion coefficient is a known quantity, epsilon r the hold up is a known quantity. So, right hand side everything is known and therefore, you will be able to determine the extent of reaction for a given residence time. Okay. Once gas residence time is known, you know the volume of the equipment and if you know the volume of the equipment, you know the solids residence time. So, your process is fully specified. Okay. So, for the case of gas solid reaction, taking place in a rotary kiln and a co-current flow, we have the process design completely specified. Okay. Now, if I ask you what is the way by which we can tell what resistance is controlling out of the three, whether it is film diffusion is controlling, whether it is reaction is controlling, whether it is ash diffusion is controlling. We said one way of knowing this is to try and do an experiment where we change velocities. When you change velocities, mass transfer coefficient changes generally to the power of 0.8 of Reynolds number. So, you will find velocity effects generally affecting the mass transfer coefficient. Therefore, if you do three experiments in three different velocities, you will be able to tell whether the mass transfer is an important resistance or not. Similarly, if you have control due to chemical reaction, chemical reactions are very strong functions of temperature. You do experiments at three different temperatures, you will find that if it is important, then temperature effects will show up because reaction rates will change rapidly because of the choice of temperatures. If it is ash diffusion control, we know that it depends on square of particle size. Therefore, if we choose different particle sizes, immediately that effect will come out. Therefore, to discern the importance of controlling regime, is essentially do some experiments to find out what is important. Okay. Now, having said this, let us look at an example from see, see we did at an, so this is conversions from R T D. See what we had done so far, if you look here, what is it that we have done so far? Here we said gas and solids are in co-current flow and the implicit assumption here is that both are in plug flow. Therefore, the residence times are the same for every particle. This is implicit in this formulation, but this may not be the case. Therefore, we will have to see what can we do in case there is an RTD. The RTD can be for gas, it can be for solids. Okay. So, we have done this, I just set it down for the case of uh, film diffusion. Film diffusion, let us say there is a single particle and we have said this that if there is a single particle, that particle behaves like this. We have derived this. Okay. If there is a single particle and if it reacts and it will react in this form. Now, if you now put this inside a reaction equipment, it is a reaction equipment where you know that it has RTDs, that RTD of the reacting equipment is some E function. This let us say this is known to you. How does it come? It comes from an experiment. We have done these experiments. So, whatever be the equipment, we can determine what is the residence time 
distribution for that particular. If it is for solids, we do an experiment by putting a tracer on the solid state. If it is for gas, we put a gas tracer. Both types of experiments we may have done in our undergraduate course or it can be done. It is not a very difficult experiment to do. Or in other words, we know what is the residence time distribution. Now, what is it that we want? We want, so we have 1 minus of x b equal to 1 minus of x b 0 to infinity. Can we say this? We said this in the context of we what we have said so far is I just recall what we have said. We said C A average equal to C A element multiplied by E T D T. Okay. Exactly what I have written. Okay. Same thing is being written. So, the average you will see is average each particle multiplied by the E T D T of that particle. Okay. Now, what happens in a, uh, in a gas solid reaction is that let us recognize that once again in a gas solid reaction we have 1 minus of x b equal to 0 to tau 1 minus of x b to the E t d t plus tau to infinity. 1 minus of x b e t d t. Can I write this? Now, what happens to this integral tau to infinity 1 minus of x b e t d t? What happens to the integral? We know that at tau x b is 1. Therefore, 1 minus of x b is 0 for all particles with time of residence greater than tau. Therefore, the second integral goes to 0. Therefore, in gas solid reactions where the time for complete consumption is finite, the integral has to go from 0 to tau and not 0 to infinity. Is this clear? Okay. So, recognize that the, our integral goes from 0 to tau and not 0 to infinity. What we have said is that this integral 0 to infinity have broken up into 0 to tau and tau to infinity. Okay. Now, 1 minus of x b, what is the value of 1 minus of x b? for time of residence greater than tau, every particle is fully complete converted for time of residence greater than tau. Therefore, 1 minus x b for that particle is 0. Therefore, the second integral is identically 0. Therefore, the second integral disappears. Is that clear? Yes or no? 1 minus x b is 0 because the time of residence is greater than tau when time of residence is greater than tau the react the particle is fully consumed fully reacted x b is 1 therefore 1 minus of x b is 0 therefore 1 minus of x e t d t is 0 therefore we delete that term okay therefore 1 minus of x bar b which is the average extent of reaction you will find on the particle is 0 to tau of 1 minus of x b e t d t what is 1 minus of x b for the case of film diffusion control we have already written 1 minus of x b, we have said it is 1 minus t by tau f, it has come from our uh, single particle analysis. Therefore, 1 minus of x bar b equal to integral 0 to tau 1 minus of t by tau f e t d t. This is all right. What is, what is the first term? First term is how the particle behaves. Okay. What is the second term? Second term talks about how much time this particle is spending in the equipment and it is this product which gives you the average. Is this clear? First gives you the behavior of the particle, second term gives you how much time the particle is spending in the equipment. Therefore, that product gives you the average integrated over 0 to tau. Is this clear? So, that is what is this whole thing about. Okay. Now, if we have done this for the case of film, this is for film diffusion control okay. and similarly you can do for reaction control and so on. See, I uh, just want to begin what is called as population balance modeling. See, 
see if you look at a chemical reaction particularly with respect to particulates like you know gas solid reactions where solids are moving gas is moving and we want to understand how the solids how much time it is spending in the equipment how much time gas is spending in the equipment. So, basically we want to get more clarity on what happens to each element that is going into the equipment. So, this this is a very nice technique and uh, I want to present this in the simplest form there is a lot of material in the literature the, in this simplest form I have taken an example a simple example to illustrate what we want to do. Okay. Now, we have been talking about stirred tanks for a long time, correct. So, what do we have in stirred tank? We have a, a fluid entering the equipment at some flow and there is some concentration whatever that may be and comes out at some other concentration because of the reaction, correct. Now, if I ask you what is this S naught? What will you tell me? You say it is concentration of material that is entering the equipment. Suppose I ask you how do you know it what that number is you will answer saying that it is I have measured this. This is a measurement that I have done by taking samples. Okay. Now, so we write our, our material balance we write like this. this is how we generally write our material balance. So, this is a material coming in, this is material going out, this is the material that is generated and this is what is accumulating. Okay. Now, what I want to say now, you do not have to agree with me, but uh, the argument is like this. What we are measuring is not S naught, we are measuring some average. What we are measuring is some average would you agree with me? Any measurement we are doing is an average of the samples we have taken. What I am now want to say is that this number that we are measuring is actually this. What is F naught? The F naught is the distribution of that property S of which we have taken samples. That means, there are many fluid elements in our sample and what you have measured is some average and that average is defined as the first moment of the distribution. Is this, is this clear to what you are saying? Every measurement we do is an average and that average is, uh, uh, is obtained by integrating that distribution property first moment of the distribution property. Therefore, if F naught if F naught is the distribution of this property S at the feed, okay. therefore, the average we measure is actually integral S F naught of S ds. Similarly, what we measure on the other side is, so I will call this as F, I put this F 1, our nomenclature is F 1. Is it okay? Yes or no? Is it okay? All right. How do we understand this R bar? We understand R bar equal to integral R F one S D S. Is it okay? The meaning of R bar what is F 1 at the exit is also the F 1 in the equipment that is the meaning of a stirred tank. Okay. We are looking at a stirred tank, we will relax all this as we go along, we will look at other situations where we can take care of all this. For the moment F 1 at the exit is same as F 1 in the equipment. That means, 
the distribution of the property that we are trying to understand it is the same inside the equipment as it is at the exit because that is the property of stirred tanks is that okay all right so what i want to do now is put this definitions uh, what i want to do now is that now that we know what is s not what is s bar and what is uh, r bar we can substitute in this equation yes or no so let us substitute and see how it looks like so uh, let me replace v not integral s f not s d s minus v not integral s f 1 s d s okay plus integral v r f 1 s d s equal to del by del t of v s f 1 f 1 d s I will put uh, there is no space here. So, I will write like this is it all right what I have written I have written it correctly please tell me. Now, what I am saying is that I will call this I want to integrate by parts I want to integrate see this integral I want to integrate by parts. So, this is d s is our first function sorry d s is our second function and this is the first function. So, integrating by parts please help me let me just write down and you tell me whether I what I have done is right. I am integrating by parts. So, I am writing the first two terms as such no change. Now, I am integrating by parts. So, first function into the integral of the second. So, I write this as uh, first function into integral of the second. I have written it like this r v f 1 s times s okay, minus integral of differential of the first differential of the first is s del by del s r f 1 is it all right what I have written yes please tell me is it okay? is this integration correct right hand and then equal to right hand side del by del t because all the rest is very straightforward once we are clear about this then all the rest is very straightforward here now ok all right I see that is a mistake I made ok ok ok. So, first function into integral of the second correct ok ok. Now, uh, what I have done is the following what I am saying now is that, that let us look at carefully what is this term first term is s f naught s d s second term is s f 1 s d s third term uh, this, this this term minus of s naught del by del s of this whole term correct. Now, what I am saying is please tell me whether I do it correctly I am just write this please please observe what I am writing f naught minus of v naught f 1 minus of del by del s of r 1 v f 1 equal to del by del t of f 1 v. What I am saying is this equation this equation here is first moment of this equation do we agree. Suppose you take first moment of this equation do you get this what is first moment you multiply by s and integrate over the interval. First moment of this equation is what we have got above is it all right huh? we all agree with this first moment of equ this equation I call this as equation star then I say that first moment of star is what I have written above. Do we all agree with this yes or no ok. You see carefully first moment of this is this accepting that this term is extra from this first moment of this this term is coming out as extra is this clear I am going to delete that term for the moment 
I will we'll talk about it later. For the moment, I am going to delete this term. I will give reasons for it a little later. So, what I am saying is that equation star represents a more fundamental statement of conservation. So far, we have always talked about conservation by talking about averages. Now, we have an equation which talks about the distribution of the property, which means now if you have a population, if you know the distribution of the property of interest in that population, then we can now understand how the distribution changes because of whatever happens inside that population. Okay. It can be birth, it can be death, it can be grow, whatever various kinds of things that happen in a population we can understand. So, this is the fundamental statement of what we call as population balance modeling. You will find in population balance literature people will start with this equation. Okay. They will give you no proof. This is this equation is assumed. What I have tried to do is that how this comes from our basic understanding of material balance in a stirred tank. Okay. And what I have tried to tell you is that there is one term that we have deleted, okay. that people delete. They delete this one term and then they write this star as the statement of conservation when we talk about populations. Okay. So, henceforth we will write our material balance for population distributions in this form, where f will refer to it can be activity of a catalyst. Okay or it can be size of a particle in a process where it undergoing combustion or it could be you know how if f refers to a share in a in a market how the share gets distributed among various people so we can talk about dynamics in an economic system we can various things you can talk about really once you understand what is this f then we can do a lot of these things okay now i will prove this term why i have deleted I will prove that shortly as we go along and look at some examples. For the moment, let us assume that this is ok. Now, having said this, what people do in the literature, I will tell you. People do not derive it in this form. This form is it is not derived. Instead, they do it in a slightly different way. What they do is the following. So, I will call this a setting up, setting up population balance from basics. So, what they will do is like this. I will call this S, I will call this S plus D S. Okay. So, what are we doing? We are trying to look at an interval between S and S plus D S and trying to find out what happens to this interval due to flow and due to reaction. Okay. Now, what do what happens to this? So, I am writing convective flow. Convective flow is so much material enters this interval due to convective flow. Do we agree? Yes or no? Do we agree or not? What I have written? See, we have a stirred tank into which material is entering. This is our stirred tank. This is our stirred tank material is entering, material is leaving. This we say is F naught, this we say is F 1. Correct. So, if you take an interval between S and S plus D S, we want to know what happens to this interval because of flow and reaction. Okay. Because of flow, material so much is material is entering. Once again, it is input minus of output plus generation equal to accumulation. Okay. For the moment, we can write for steady state maybe. So, how much material is entering interval between S and S plus D S? I say it is V naught F naught S D S. Is this clear to all of you? So, much material is entering. How much is leaving? V naught F 1 S D S. Okay. Now, what happens to this interval because of reaction? Okay. Let us say our reaction is R 1. Okay. So, material the reaction is written like this so so much of material at s is entering so much of material
is leaving. Can we say that? In the interval between S and S plus dS, so much is whatever reacting at S will contribute to S plus dS, correct? R1, this is that means uh, whatever material is happening at S, it will contribute to S plus dS. Therefore, whatever is accumulating between here is this difference is what will accumulate. So, that is equal to zero. This is how our friends will write the uh, population balance in the literature, whether we understand this. You have, you have to understand this is how they will write. Okay. That means, this th what is this reaction rate function? It increases the property, the property increases. Okay. Therefore, S contributes to S plus dS, it is this difference which will contribute to the interval between S and S plus dS. So, this is how in population balance modeling they will write the effect of chemical reaction. Now, if you take the limit as s tends to 0, our equation will look like this. So, this is how they would write. Is this clear? How do we derive population balance equation for a stirred tank? Okay. So, the, imp the interesting thing is only this to understand how do we represent the reaction term uh, con uh, contributing to the interval between S and S plus dS. This is how it is represented. Whatever reacts at S contributes to S plus dS, whatever reacts at S plus dS goes out. It is this difference which will accumulate in the interval. So, this is how it is represented. Okay. We have derived the same thing from fundamentals already. Okay. Previously, we derived the same thing from fundamentals. Is that clear? But we said we will, we will knock out one term. We will knock out, I have not given you reasons for that. We will come to that shortly. But in the literature, they will do it like this and not recognize that there is one term which you have knocked out. Is that clear what we are saying? So, basically, I mean what they have left out we will prove that is that's not wrong, it is ok, uh, but uh, what you will see in the literature is this. Okay. Therefore, if you have a stirred tank where the distribution of property at entrance is F naught, the distribution of property at the exit is F 1 and the, the rate at which the property changes because of this reaction is represented by R 1 and T 1 bar represents the residence time of that property in the equipment. Now, this is what describes how the distribution changes because of chemical reaction. Is that clear? We have run out of time. So, what we will do when we meet tomorrow is that we will go through this once again and then try and apply this to one or two um, situations of uh, you know practical interest in our process industry try and understand how we can actually determine the distribution functions and how those distribution functions are affected by the process parameters and how they are useful in designing equipments and in you know understanding how the equipments will perform and so on. I will stop there.